So, Grandpa, how's the new boat? It's a boat. It floats. I hear it's beautiful. When are you going to let me take her out? Now, Logan, you don't have the best track record when it comes to boats. Only other people's boats. Our boats are very safe. We should do a summer trip. Maybe hit the Amalfi Coast again? All of us, Rory, Josh, you, me. <laughs> Dad. Maria. Yes, sir. It's too hot. Bring me a salad. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. What? Mom's a stress smoker. I don't understand why everyone's so upset. Josh seems fine. Oh, the Huntsburgers aren't interested in fine. Sure. Yes, Dad? What time did Mitchum say he'd be here? <clears throat> I don't know. He didn't say. Well, this is ridiculous. <clears throat> Please, Dad. We're all just going to sit around this table and pretend there's nothing going on? Let's just wait for Mitchum. There are serious matters to be discussed here. This is an important family. Marrying into it is important business. But no, we can't discuss this until Mitchum gets here. What is this? Go away. OK, I'm sorry. I have to jump in here. Grandpa, we all respect you and Mom and Dad, but the bottom line here is Honor has to be happy. Now, if she loves Josh, then. Logan, I appreciate you defending me, but I can take it from here. Mom. Grandpa, I had hoped that you would be happy for me, but obviously that's not going to happen. You didn't even let me announce it to you before you formed your opinion, and I'm sorry you feel the way you do, but Josh and I made it official last week. We are engaged now, and no matter what you say, we are going to get married in June. Well, of course you're going to get married. You've been dating for three years, and I already put a hold on the Japanese tea garden for next spring. Oh, well, that sounds great. Thank you. So we should celebrate, then. We'll celebrate when we've finished our discussion. Which discussion? The discussion about unsuitable people marrying into this family. What? I'll be right back. You should know better than this, Logan. I know you like to joke around and tease us, but I always thought, at the end of the day, you understood what your responsibilities to this family were. Mom, I suggest you come back in here right now. Logan. You just haven't thought about this. I mean, I'm sure Rory understands. She wants to work. Isn't that right, Rory? Emily's always talking about you wanting to be a reporter and travel around doing this and that. A girl like Rory has no idea what it takes to be in this family, Logan. Oh, my God. She wasn't raised that way. She wasn't bred for it. And this isn't at all about her mother. It's just you come from two totally different worlds. It would never work, not for you. And certainly not for us. OK, this conversation is going to end right now. I am not going to sit you here. You are and... going to be taking over this company. That's what you are going to be doing. And when you do, you're going to need the right kind of person at your side. This isn't college, Logan. And wh whatever happened to that Fallon girl? I loved her. Do you talk anymore? No, we don't talk. We never talked. You talked. Oh, what a shame. I just loved her. OK, let's go. Logan, you have to understand. You bring this girl home without any warning at all, and Honor tells us you're calling her your girlfriend. We have to take that seriously. Logan, come back here. I don't understand. You're psychotic. What more is there to understand? But, but why don't they think I'm good enough? Rory. I mean, I'm a Gilmore. Do they know that? My ancestors came over on the Mayflower. Don't try and analyze it. There's no rhyme or reason. I had a coming out party. I went to Chilton and Yale. And why are they OK with Josh? I mean, he doesn't even say anything. At least I noticed the Velasquez. Josh isn't marrying the heir of the Huntsburger fortune. You are. I got to get out of here. Logan! Perfect. Did they start dinner? And is it some sort of precious fish dish? Because I'm dying for a steak. You're Rory, I assume. Heard a lot about you. We're leaving. What? Why? You know why. Had a long day, Logan. Don't want to play games. Is dinner over? No. The Huntsberger family Shanghai is over. Dinner, however, is still going on. Oh, oh OK, OK. What happened? It... I don't know. Why is your mother smoking? We have to go. I'm sure they'll fill you in on everything. It was nice to meet you. OK, if I just drop you here. Drop me here? Yeah, the lights are on. Paris is home. I've had about all the crazy I can for one evening. OK, sure. You know we don't have to go in. We can go get something to eat. I'm not hungry. OK. I just want to walk a little, clear my head. OK. I'll call you later. Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. you come in? All right. Thank you. 
What are you doing here? I was sent to open the door like a servant. What? Where's Lorelai? I don't know. She doesn't keep the help informed. She's not here? No, I am here. I am here and not at the Dragonfly Inn, which I theoretically run when I'm not busy answering doors like Benson. I don't understand. You gave her my message? I gave her your message and she told me to come over here and let you in, like I'm a puppy fetching slippers and giving my pup for a liver treat. But I don't... Did she leave anything for me? She left me. But I just... I can't... Well, this is absolutely incredible. Does she think this is a funny thing to do? I drive all the way from Hartford. She did nothing. Nothing's packed, nothing's ready to go. Where are Rory's good clothes? I don't know, but I will continue to search for them frantically. Are you just going to sit there? I was instructed to stay until you leave. Like I need to be watched. Like I'm a meth head stealing a television set to support my habit. Well, this is completely unacceptable. Rory needs something to wear to court. I'm sorry, if you're talking to me, you'll have to do it in woofs. You've been working with my daughter way too long. Don't uh, I know it. surprise you gave me this morning. I can't wait to tell the girls at the club all about it. I mean, they're always bragging about their daughters did this and their daughter did that. Well, finally, I get to go in there and say, oh, really? Well, today, my daughter invited me over and then didn't show up. And then she had me watched by a surly barking Frenchman so that I didn't steal anything. I didn't invite you over, Mother. Top that, ladies. This was unforgivable, Lorelai. Disgraceful behavior, even by your standards. And since I assume you've torn up all of my notes, I will read them to you. I made copies. Dear Lorelai, I was shocked and saddened by your decision not to be at home when I came by for Rory's things. My God. There, that's all of her stuff. You happy? Lorelai, you scared me half to death. Yeah, well, follow through. It's always been my problem. Oh, well. Um, so we've got to close books, stuffed animals. I even checked the laundry to make sure nothing was waiting to be washed. Okay, we good? What do you mean, barging in here in the middle of the night? Are you crazy? Mom just seemed extremely concerned about getting the rest of Rory's things. She needed something to wear to court. Yeah, so I figured I'd better bring them right over here. Now I did, so I'm done. Laurel, I stop this. I know you're upset. I know you hate us, but... I don't hate you. Why would I hate you? Well, because we... Because you thought we... You were just being you. You couldn't help it. What are you talking about? The scorpion and the frog. It's an old story. Scorpion says to the frog, hey, frog, give me a lift to the other side of the pond. Frog says, no way, you'll sting me and I'll die. Scorpion says, will not, because then we'd both drown. Frog says, cool. So the scorpion gets on the frog's back and frog makes it to the middle of the pond and the scorpion stings him. As the frog is going down, he says, why would you do that? Now we'll both die. Scorpion says, sorry, it's just my nature. Frog, scorpion. I always thought it was a turtle. Whatever it was, you guys couldn't help it. Lorelai, why don't you sit and calm down? I am calm. I'm fine. You guys must be pretty jazzed, though, huh? I mean, you finally did it. You finally got a shot at getting the daughter you've always wanted. <sighs> I'm too tired to have this conversation. Rory, here, right under your roof. Excellent. You're being ridiculous. Now you get your do-over. A new and improved Lorelai. Congrats. Very well played. Lorelai, listen to me. I know that you think some sort of con has been perpetrated on you. Hey, it's only a paper moon, Dad. The fact of the matter is, your mother and I were just trying to do the right thing. We're all striving for the same goal. We want Rory happy and healthy. Now, she's taken a bit of a stumble, but we can get her back on the right track, all of us, together. And we're going to need your input and your involvement to achieve that. My involvement ends here with the laundry basket. What is that flip remark supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that I'm out. You've won. She's all yours. Of course, the laundry basket, I'm going to want back. He came to me, Grandma, and he asked if he could do anything, and... This really isn't necessary. I let him pay for Yale. He's my father. <laughs> you know something I don't, Mom? 
How convenient that he's her father now. Perhaps your father can reimburse me for the five cases of scotch I had to send the man in the bursar's office. I'm sure he'd be happy to. You know what else I find amusing? Reno 911. I find it very amusing that Christopher is suddenly such a wonderful person. Oh. Mom. It seems to me that when I was in cahoots with him, everyone thought that I was a villain. And now suddenly you're in cahoots with him, and that's perfectly fine. Please don't say cahoots anymore. It's disturbing. You're being a little hypocritical, don't you think? No, I don't. You were trying to break Luke and me up, and I'm trying to put Rory through college. Rory was already being put through college by us. That's right. I didn't want you to pay for it anymore. There. There it is. So you went to Christopher. He came to me. Oh, please. You just wanted to hurt us. By taking money from my father? Yes, exactly. I've had enough of this. I'm going back out to touch up my moose skin. I have some work to do. Fine. I have to go anyhow. Hey! This is not going to happen. You're not going back out to your moonscape. You're not going back to work, and you're not going home. Now, we all agreed to have Friday night dinner, and we're here, and I smell dinner. And yes, apparently there are some issues to be worked out, but no one, I mean no one, is leaving here until we do. Things were out of control. Not the point, simply. Not that it is completely... Rory, not... do not cut your grandmother off. Well, I'm just saying You that... come running to us, begging us to take you in because you can't possibly deal with your mother. That's not what happened. We take you in, we pay to redecorate a pool house so you can have a place all your own. I did not ask you to do that. You accepted it. You did not turn it down. I didn't hear you saying, Grandma, stop. I didn't see you throw yourself at the decorators while they were putting up your very expensive wallpaper. And then when you decide you don't like how things are going, you leave. With no notice, by the way. And you leave two strange boys in our house unsupervised. We're missing two picture frames, by the way. Colin and Finn did not steal your picture. Do not raise your voice to your grandmother. I never realized how spoiled you were, Rory, but I guess that's to be expected. Only children are always spoiled. I'm sorry I didn't leave a note. My, that sounds heartfelt. Doesn't that sound heartfelt, Richard? No, I've never been more touched in all my life. I apologize you don't believe it. I try to defend myself and you don't want to hear it. So apparently, there's nothing I can do here. Oh, there's plenty you can do. What? What can I do? Well, first of all, you can admit what you've done. You can apologize. I was just trying to apologize. Cut her some slack, Mom. Rory was going through something terrible. Life is full of terrible things, Lorelai. She was emotional. When you're emotional, you don't think clearly. I remember a woman who tried to buy a plane when her granddaughter moved out. I tried to timeshare a plane. It is in no way even close to the same thing. <sighs> oh, I've never been so happy to see a salad in my entire life. Oh, I can't believe what I'm hearing. If we'd known the extent of the issue, we might not have taken Rory in. I tried to tell you. You did not. I came here and I told you exactly what happened with Mitchum and you didn't want to hear it. I don't remember that. I don't either. The Huntsburgers told her she wasn't good enough and Mitchum told her she didn't have it. He what? Yes, and now she's dropped out of Yale, but between the three of us, we can knock some sense into her. Of course we'll help you. This is not happening. I'll call Charlie Davenport tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. Just <laughs> thank you. And scene. This is a really good sorbet. I know, isn't it? Teresa made it herself. Mm. Mango? Passion fruit. Delicious. It certainly is. Mm. What are you thinking, buying an airplane? I didn't buy it. I looked at it. Well, what were you doing looking at a plane? I can look at a plane if I want to look at a plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I lead her over to the good table, smiling like we're the best friends in the world. And I tell her, Shira, you don't think Rory is good enough to be in your family. She is. We are just as good as you are. After all, you are nothing but a two-bit gold digger. And how you managed to bag Mitchum, I will never know. <laughs> you didn't I? Oh, she, oh, yes, she did. I told her Mitchum still plays around. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. Tell her exactly what you said. What did I say? About her waking. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I got it. I told her, Mitchum still plays around, you know. Well, of course, you know. That's why your weight goes up and down 30 pounds every three months. <laughs> oh, my. Ruthless woman. <laughs> I bowed to the foot of the master. I only wished I'd remember to call her a cocktail waitress. Ooh, ooh, that's my mother's version of the C word. <laughs> <laughs> You have no right to talk to Twinnie Halpern or anyone else in the DAR. That is my organization. I'm not quitting. Oh, yes, you are. So, how's Luke? He is a kid. We were 16. We didn't want to get married. When you get pregnant, you get married. A child needs a mother and a father. Oh, my God. Well, I think we've officially reinstated Friday night dinner. Mom, look who's here. Who? Well, look. If I wanted to look, I would look. I haven't looked. Therefore, you must draw your own conclusions. Ah, thank you, dear boy. You're welcome, Trix. Trix? 
Dad's pet name for Gran. Isn't it just darling? Hi, Gran. Lorelai. Yes, it's, it's so good to see you again. Trix, this is Rory. You haven't met her yet. No, I don't believe I have. Hello. Come. I want to get a very good look at both of you. They're tall. Well, yes, they are. <laughs> How's your health? Oh, good. Very healthy. Mm -hmm. Good. That means that the majority of your blood is Gilmore blood. Gilmores don't get sick. Am I right, Richard? No, we wouldn't dare, Trix. That's right. Your mother is always sick. I'm hardly always sick. You're sick right now. Are you sick now, Mom? Headache. Gilmores don't have headaches. Our heads are perfect. You don't drink? Yeah, uh, well. <laughs> Emily, get this woman a drink. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, thanks, Dad. Wait, Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go get the hors d'oeuvres. So you're Rory. Yes, ma'am. My son speaks of you constantly. He seems very fond of you. Oh, well, I'm very fond of him, too. <laughs> this little girl is as smart as a whip, Mom. I think she has a great deal of you in her. Really? Mm. How nice. Is this cheese? Yes, it is. Am I supposed to eat that cheese? Well, only if you like. Emily, where are those spiced nuts that Trix like so much? I'll get some. So, Lorelei, since I've seen you last, you've grown up, gotten pregnant, out of wedlock, raised a child, and still haven't bothered to get married. Have I left anything out? Well, uh, sometime in between uh, growing up and getting pregnant, I got my ears pierced. I've always hated scandal. However, I've always appreciated self-sufficiency. Tell me, how do you support this child? I run an inn. Hard work? Yes, it is. Good. Hard work is good for a woman, makes her stronger. I admire people who enjoy hard work. Here we go, spice nuts. Thank you, Emily. I suppose I could just put these nuts in my hand. I'll be right back. So, Gran, um, when was the last time I saw you? You were still in your teens, wild hair flying everywhere. I see you've taken care of that. Uh, yes, I joined a support group, bought a hairbrush, and uh, just taking it one day at a time. That was a joke. Yes, it is. Very good. Thank you. I have dishes and napkins. Good for you. Richard, I would like to be escorted into the dining room now. Your wish is my command. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that dinner's ready just yet. Well, perhaps our presence in the dining room will teach your help that when one is told dinner is at 7, people often expect dinner at 7. But it's only 5 after, Mom. Only 5 after, Richard. In the event that I'm kidnapped and a ransom is demanded at a certain time, I would prefer that Emily not be in charge of the drop-off. Grandma, this dinner's delicious. Very good, young lady. We all believed you. Now, let's talk about your education. Where are you attending school? Chilton. Rory is in the top 10% of her class. We're very proud of our Rory. She's going to Harvard. Harvard? Yes, ma'am. Richard, how can you allow this girl to go to Harvard? And now, Trix. You're a Yale man. Your father was a Yale man. Well, we want Rory to be whatever kind of man she wants to be. <laughs> That's enough jokes for this evening, Lorelei. Sorry. Now, if you don't mind my asking, Chilton is rather an expensive institution. I'm curious how the manager of an inn can afford such a luxury. Uh, well, we're helping Lorelei out a little. Yes, we've seen to it that Rory's education is taken care of. But it's temporary. It's a loan. I plan to pay them back every cent. But they know this. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. Richard, tomorrow, Rory, I shall plan the menu. When you lived in Europe, you learn a thing or two about food. Oh, I can't. I'm studying tomorrow. I, I'm in the study group, and our presentation's due on Monday. Oh, very well. Your mother can tell you all about it. I will. I promise. Won't you have dessert? I once traveled to a small village in Cambodia. I did not eat dessert there, either. Hi. Hi. Uh... Were you, were you... Um, I was at, uh, Lane's. Right, Lane's. Um... Um... So, you're home this weekend. Yeah, I, uh, I ran out of clean clothes and quarters, so... How are things? Good. You? Good. You like Yale? I love Yale. I figured. And Connecticut State. It's, it's good. Oh, good. I'm glad it's good. I mean, not that I would have had any recourse if it wasn't, but, uh, this makes my lack of recourse a lot easier to deal with. 
So I see you've taken over the town. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Lindsay thought she likes the gazebo. And, and it's her wedding. It is her wedding. And your wedding. I mean, it's your wedding, too. Yes, it is. It's it's my wedding, too. Well, it's nice. It's, um, it's pretty. It looks like heaven or a <laughs> Victoria's Secret commercial, which to some people is basically the same thing. <laughs> I didn't know you'd be home this weekend. It was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. Because if I had known, I would have, you know, invited you. Oh, oh, well, it's... I mean, I, I didn't want you to think I, I was just not inviting you. No, I didn't, I didn't think that. I, I just, I just figured you'd be at school. Because you're logical. I just didn't know. No, I know you didn't know. I mean, I didn't want you to think that No, I, I didn't think, I don't think. I go to Yale now, they think for you. <laughs> but, hey, since you are here, come. Come. To my wedding, come to my wedding. Oh. Dean. You and Lorelai, I want you to. Well... Chicken or beef? What? Wait, beef. <laughs> of course beef. I mean, the two of you are definitely beef. I mean, not like not like you resemble beef or anything. You don't, you don't even have to... Okay, so noon at the church. I'll be the one in the tux. <laughs> and don't worry, we didn't write our own vows and no one sing an opera. I know you think that's lame. Oh, no, well, it's a wedding. It's supposed to be... operatic. Okay, so I, I better get over there. Lindsay's expecting me. Uh, so... I'll just see you two tomorrow. But... Don't drink anymore. Don't play Jets. Don't jump on the furniture. Just sit still. Okay? And do what? I don't know. Make up a dirty version of the fight song or something. Yeah! Great idea! <laughs> All right. What did he say? Ah, uh, he is so toasted. Rory. Did he say what I think he said? Hey, guys, you know what I think? I think it's real late and that maybe you ought to cancel phase two. <laughs> no way. Hear him out, fellas. I mean, think about it, guys. How are you going to beat laser tag? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Aw, it's Dean sick. He just needs his rest. Kyle, uh, why don't you march your friends out of here? I'll take care of the groom and he'll see you all tomorrow. He's right, guys. Let's saddle up. Uh, aren't we getting pancakes? I'm not feeling good. Come on, big guy. What? Try it. Oh, oh, All right, here we are. Okay. She's smart, man. You know, she's so smart. I know, I know. She could probably fix the world, you know? Right, right. She could team up with Kyle. Her brains, his brawn. No, not Kyle Rory. Yeah, almost there. She's the one, you know? Come on, Dean. Just. Lie down there, stop talking. And the hair, pretty hair, she has the prettiest hair. And the head, what is that? Just your shoes. Shh, shh, shh. I miss her. Why didn't she love me? Oh, hey, I think I found the perfect wedding present for Dean. A sweet, not too personal, classy, yet cheap. We're not going. What? Luke was looking for you and ran into me, and he was all nervous and everything, and then he finally just said we shouldn't go. What does that mean? I think it means that we shouldn't go. He give a reason? Not really. I'll go talk to him. No, Mom, he seemed really serious, and I think that if you saw him, you'd feel the same way. He was kind of upset. About Dean's wedding? Yeah. So we're not going? I think it's better that we don't. OK. Mystery, though. Kind of. Well, you got your nothing to do weekend back. Yeah, got that back. Um, Mom, Kirk's following us in a little clowny car. He's watching out for us. Okay. Take it that Christopher is still out of town? He couldn't make it tonight. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. That man has been traveling quite a lot lately. Oh, yeah? I guess. Well, I hope he'll be around for the party your mother's planning. I know I'm looking forward to it. It's my only hope for eating a decent meal in the foreseeable future. Your mother is planning to serve Cornish game hens. Is that still the plan, Emily? Yes, I've even spoken to the caterer about preparing a special skinless hen for you. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't get angry, Richard. It's your doctor's orders, not mine. You know what? I'm full. Richard. Richard! The idea that two grown men hitting a tiny ball with metal sticks is the equivalent of Hamlet? Ridiculous. But can I say anything? No, because I can't agitate him. It is ridiculous. 
Golf is really more like Richard III. You know, they're all hunched over. I'm going to go get him. It sounds like Grandma's going full steam ahead with this whole party planning thing. I know. She's going to kill 400 Cornish game hens, probably with her own bare hands. Your grandfather just had a heart attack. Your grandmother is not drinking. This isn't exactly the ideal time to tell them their one and only daughter's marriage is over. I know. I don't know what she'll do. She's gone bananas. I mean, for all I know, she'll throw a Molotov mocktail at me. I know, but only you can save the Cornish game hens. Save the Cornish game hens. Just because your father can't drink doesn't mean the rest of us should suffer. Cheers. Ah, oh, that's better. Mom, Christopher and I split up. Okay. I hardly know what to say. Really? That's great. You don't have to say anything at all, now or ever. What's a windmill park? Uh, it, it looks like Dad owns a couple of windmills in Palm Springs. We own windmills? Well, they're energy generators. I had no idea we owned windmills. <laughs> and if I want the hidden account bar, I double-click that arrow thing up there on the left. Um, exactly. <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna do all this. Mom, what are you talking about? You just click, click, clicked. You got it all down. Now, but I barely understand what you've been telling me. This is your father's job. I know, Mom. You gotta give the guy a break, you know? He's not gonna watch TV in the bedroom forever. No. No, he's not. Oh, my God! I don't mean he's gonna die. Well, what are you telling me? That he's going to live forever? That he's immortal? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm just saying, with time, you know... It's like a canoe. What's like a canoe? Life. Okay. You're just paddling along in a canoe. Mother, have you ever been in a canoe? Lorelei. Well, I just can't picture you in a canoe. Your father and I have been paddling a canoe together for years, only now he's dropped the paddle. Ah. You just dropped it. Not only that, but now the canoe is going in circles. Ah. Oh. Without your father there, I'm paddling on my side, and the canoe is spinning in circles. And the harder I paddle, the faster it spins. And it's hard work, and I'm getting tired. Dizzy, I would think. You are in a kayak. You know how to do all of this. How does it put me in a kayak? Kayaks have paddles with things on both ends. You steer it by yourself. Mom, you know how to do things by yourself. You are totally capable. Sure, I went to Smith and I was a history major, but I never had any plans to be an historian. I was always going to be a wife. I mean, the way I saw it, a woman's job was to run a home, organize the social life of a family, and bolster her husband while he earned a living. It was a good system, and it was working very well all these years. Only when your husband isn't there because he's watching television in a dressing gown, you realize how dependent you are. I didn't even know I owned windmills. Mom, now you know, and you know how to right-click. But you, you provide for yourself. You're not dependent on anyone. <laughs> You're independent. I am kayak, hear me roar. I mean, look at you. For all these years, you've done very well without a husband. Maybe so, but I still wanted it to work out. You know, the way I was raised, if a married couple split up, it was a disaster because it meant the system had fallen apart. And it was particularly bad for the woman because she had to go out and find herself another rich husband, only she was older now. <laughs> but with you, it's not such a disaster, is it? Guess not. I mean, it's really not such a horrible thing that you're going to get a divorce. Not really. Oh, you're going to be fine. Thanks, Mom. You may even marry someone else someday. Who knows? Who knows? How are people? Are people good? Yeah, people are good. People are, uh... Your mom and I are engaged. Engaged? Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks. So I guess I'm gonna go. Um, thank you for the coffee.
lying to you? I told Rory we were engaged. What? How? Where? She came into the diner last night. It was awkward and stupid. I ended up telling her we were engaged. Why? Why would you do that? Why? Because she had the face. What face? The Rory face. You know the face. Yes, but Luke, you have to ignore the Rory face. That's easy for you to say. You shouldn't have told her. Yeah, you should have told her. No, she's not being told anything, so neither of us should have told her. But if one of us isn't going to tell her more, then I'm the one that shouldn't. Right, meaning not you. I should have told her. Then we're in full agreement. You should have told her. No, that's not what I'm saying. But you said it, and I agreed, so I win. How do you win? Because I have the high ground. That gives me the upper hand on anything you got. Luke. Something's wrong with this thing. There's nothing wrong with that thing. Luke, Rory started this. And right now, we are not talking. Remember, tough love, I'm on a path here. She would have seen it in the paper eventually. Seen what? Our engagement. How would it have ended up in the paper? I don't know. She'd open up the paper to the back, and there's these stupid pictures of a guy and a girl. Bill's a chiropractor. Nancy's a teacher. They met square dancing. They're on their honeymoon in Florida, and they got these smiles on their faces like their lives are going to work out the way they dreamt or something. Suckers. Those things. You played right into her hands. You can't do that. She can't just play on our emotions. She has to undo what she's done, get out of my parents' house, go back to school. Fine. Maybe I shouldn't have told her anything. Maybe I should have kicked her out, ignored her, whatever. But you got to understand something. I'm in the middle. Yeah, she's your daughter, but I'm in the middle. I know. You are in the middle. Good, because you've been acting like you don't know, like you're alone in this or something. I know. And I know you don't want my opinion on this, but you're both being dumb, and you should be talking. There. I won't say anything more about any of this again, ever. <sighs> TJ, the screw's not going in right because you got the drill on counterclockwise. It's righty tighty lefty loosey. I got to remember that. <sighs> All right, I got to get back to work. We're going to be done with what we're doing here today. We won't be here tomorrow. Luke. We're OK. Good. Nice catch. What's the problem? We're going to need another thing of bags for this next stretch. Well, then you're going to have to check back on the bus. Thanks for nothing. Repaying your debt to society, I assume. That's what this is. The system already hardened you? So I guess congratulations are in order? So how are things at the new digs? You guys set a date yet? Grandma redecorate the pool house yet? Be sure to send me a picture. Be sure to send me a change of address card. Grandma can print them out for you with a little fleur-de-lis. I'm not supposed to be talking to outsiders. Fine. You and Luke getting engaged and not telling me about it? You hurt me. Back at you. If you